Hey everyone, Matt with Motion VFX, and today we're releasing one of the most requested packs for DaVinci Resolve. This is M Style Newspaper. It's a highly flexible and customizable pack to help you build those dynamic and compelling stories inspired by print. So let me go ahead and quickly show you how easy this is to use. So after you've installed M Style Newspaper from the M Installer application, it can be located under your effects library. Under video transitions, you'll see a couple different transitions here. Coming down here to titles, we also have a couple of components, little extra elements to add to your composition. Then we also have some typography titles. And then lastly, under effects, we have a couple of different effects. We've got these movements, overlay effects, and these newspaper presets, which we'll get into in just a moment. So I'm going to come up here to toolbox and I'm just going to search for news. And this will bring up everything in the pack all in one spot. So I'm going to quickly show you how you can build a custom newspaper comp. So under our components, we have this M style newspaper print. Now what this does is it kind of just gives you this really cool texture that kind of looks like a newspaper. And if we go under the content controls and zoom up like this, you can see that none of this text is actually legible. It's meant to just be, you know, kind of a generic newspaper texture. So let's kind of position this maybe over here into this corner like that. And we also have this paper background I'm going to put this right below our print. Now with this background, you can see we've got eight of these different textures. All of them are very, you know, photo realistic. Now, in this case, you can see both of our text and our paper are both white. Of course, we can change the color of our paper right here. Or in this case, what I want to do is change the color of the text. So I'm going to go under my print controls and let's just make this not all the way black, but maybe a little bit of a lifted black, something like that. Now, just for future, I'm going to click on this little color box and just copy this code here because we might want to use that for other graphic elements that we add to the comp. So next thing I'm going to do is put this image right in that little hole there. Now I could just scale this and position it in the hole just like this. It doesn't really look realistic though, but if you change your composition mode to luminosity, that might give you a little bit more of a realistic looking effect that looks more integrated with the background here. And even if I go back to my paper background and change this color, you can see that it kind of dynamically changes the picture color as well. But instead, what I'm going to do, instead of using the luminosity composite mode, I'm going to reset everything and use this drop zone effect here. This is an overlay effect. Now, whenever you drop this onto a clip, you will see this drop zone area. And under the drop zone controls here, you can actually browse for a completely different photo if you want to. Or if you select video, it doesn't necessarily have to be a video. This is a picture, for example. But the video option will just let you use whatever image or piece of footage that you drag this effect onto. So under the content controls of my newspaper drop zone, I'm just going to take this and kind of position it inside of this little gap. And we also have some mask controls. So I might want to have a little bit of extra room here for a title. So I'm just going to reduce my mask height and maybe position this down here. And what's really cool is once you have figured out your mask and your overall shape here, you can still go into the inner position and kind of readjust that image or video inside of that mask. You can also scale it up. So I might want to make sure I can see that entire sign, something like this, but I want plenty of room up here at the top. Okay, so let's add a title. So coming down here to title, Let's just try this very first preset. Let's reduce the height of these clips here. I'm gonna position this right on top. And you can see this is white. And like I said earlier, we can take that same color that we have for our background texture. And I'm just gonna paste that into here so that they both match. I'm gonna do the same for my title controls. And I actually want these to be left aligned. So right here under my horizontal anchor, I'm just gonna left align each of these so that Whenever I type something else, it will stay anchored to this left side here and just type in towards the right. Okay, so let's reposition those so that they're aligned. And then under the content controls, I'm just gonna reduce the overall size and adjust the position to fill this little gap right up at the top. And of course, this text is completely customizable. Now, one thing I'm not liking about this particular comp so far my drop zone here has this kind of prism effect, which could look cool in some cases, but in this case, because we're trying to make it look like it's printed on the page, 
it won't really make sense to have this chromatic aberration only on this image here. So under my drop zone control, I'm just going to disable the prism control. And you can see that just makes it look a little bit more integrated into the page. And I think we could also match the darker areas of this picture to the rest of the page a little bit better. So I'm just going to reduce the gamma a bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And you can see if we play that through, everything kind of fades on like this. Now, maybe I don't want the print to fade on. So I'm going to turn off the in and the out animation. And I'll do the same with the paper background. I'm going to go ahead and leave the in and the out animation on for this image as well as the title. So if we play this through, you can see those two elements kind of fade in. The text writes on nicely. Now, another thing I could add to this is this highlighter effect here. Now this is a component. It's just a little highlighter animation that kind of slides in from left to right. And under the highlight controls, there are three different textures to choose from. So for this one, I think I'm gonna choose number one. Let's just put this right on top of these other graphics we have. Now to make this look like it's actually writing on the page, I'm gonna come over here to settings and under the composite mode, I like to put this on linear burn. That's gonna make it look like it's actually coloring the page, the black and the white. And let's use the content controls and kind of reposition this. Maybe we'll put this over the word increases. And we can also kind of offset this just a little bit. So after the title writes on, it then highlights nicely like that. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the out animation on my highlighter. Same with the title. So what I'll do now is select everything and right click and choose new compound clip. Okay, so now that everything is condensed into a single piece of media on the timeline, we can add some dynamic movement using one of these movement presets. So I'm just gonna drag on this multiple zoom preset here. Now, this one is pretty cool. If you play through it, you can see it has three locations that it focuses on. And the best way to control kind of where this focuses on the screen is to use the fusion overlay, which you can access in this little drop down menu right here. So when you turn the fusion overlay on, you will see this green path on screen. Now, sometimes when you try to grab a point, you'll see this kind of bug happen where it doesn't really let you adjust and it flickers a lot and kind of sticks back to its original position. So if that happens, what you can do is just double click in the empty area and then go try to grab a point and you should have no problem. So I'm going to let this play and kind of position this first point. Maybe we'll focus a little bit on this first word here. And over here in the inspector, you can even control the zoom amount for each individual point. So for this first one, let's kind of do something like this. Let's let it play through the second point. And maybe this one is a little bit over to this side, but then we can zoom in. And then instead of zooming further in at 1.5, I'm actually gonna zoom out just a bit like this so we can see you know, this sign, something like this. And maybe that second one, we're gonna zoom in a little bit further. And if you wanna go past one, you can always type in a larger amount, like 1.2 or something. Okay. All right, so let's start to build a new composition based on uh, this picture here. So what I might wanna do in this example is maybe draw the attention to a specific person on the screen. So one way to do that is to use this blurring preset here. I'm going to drop this right onto my clip here. Now with the fusion overlay, you can also use this to define what areas of the frame get blurred. And by default, you can see it creates almost like a tilt shift stripe through the screen here. But over here on the blur gradient type, we can switch this to something like radial, for example. This will give us a circle, kind of blur everything out from there. We can adjust the blur amount. I might want to dial this back just a little bit like this. Okay, now let's also add this off screen light. So this will also kind of draw the viewer's eye to a certain area on screen. And what we can do with this is use this little on screen control to kind of position this right over our main focus on the screen here. And we can reduce the radius a bit. That way we're kind of adding a little bit of color to this area of the frame. Okay, so both of those effects will kind of fade on nicely. Now, maybe we want to also add some movement to this. Let's try this custom camera right here. So what this does, it kind of zooms in and then zooms back out towards the end. 
And what's interesting about this particular effect is you have an in duration and an out duration. So this affects the speed. If you want this to have a slower animation on the way in, you can just increase the in duration slider. And you could also decrease if you want a faster animation. And under the camera controls, you can really fine tune what part of the frame this starts to focus on. And same thing with this, if you use the fusion overlay, you can drag this little center point to position the zoom pivot to a certain area of the frame here. So whenever you zoom in, you can see it's focusing on that pivot. And there's also a couple different 3D sliders here, so we could even adjust the tilt as well as the pan. Now, if you go really far, you'll start to see this background. And under background controls, you could also change the color using this gradient slider here. So this first triangle is going to represent the center, which you can't really see unless you start to pan this pretty far. But in this case, I'm gonna to try to avoid exposing that background. So now when we play through that, it still starts flat like this, but then kind of tilts and pans around that center focus here. Now, I think something that could make this even better is if we added a little bit of a graphic overlay as well, something like this newspaper outline. But if we were to just put this right on top of the shot, you can see that this line doesn't really stick to this 3D animation that we've created using this movement effect. So what we could do is copy. I'm going to select this clip here and just hit Control C. And then I'm actually going to delete that last effect here, this custom camera. I'm just going to delete that. And what we could do is right click and convert this into a compound clip. And then I'm just going to right click and paste attributes and just select fusion effects. Now this will essentially copy over all those effects, but I really just wanted the camera. So I'm going to delete these two effects. So inside that compound clip, we still have the blurring and the off screen light effect, but outside of the compound clip is where we're applying this custom camera. So what we could do is take this outline and instead right click this compound clip and choose open and timeline. And inside of here, what we can do is paste this outline on top. And same thing with this, we can also use the fusion overlay and kind of take all of these points here and try to shape this circle right around the area of interest. And once I have it set how I like it, I can go ahead and double click to get back to my main timeline down here in the left corner. And now if we play through that, you can see we have this really cool outline that circles around our subject as the 3D camera kind of pans and tilts at the same time. And something else we could do to add to this, we could use a transition to go from these two compositions. Now, because I made these into a compound clip, you can see that this clip actually starts right here and this one ends right there. So if we were to put these back to back like this, there wouldn't be any additional room for a transition to work. And because these already have some built in animation, I don't want to trim, you know, like this and have a transition that's cutting into this animation. I actually want to display the animation inside of this comp uh, basically in its entirety. So I don't want to override any of that animation using a transition. So what I could do instead, I'm just going to move this up to the track above and let's open this up in the timeline and I'm just going to copy the picture inside of here. Let's go back out to our main timeline and then I'm just going to paste this right below on the first track here. And with this picture selected, I'm just going to go up here and delete both of these effects so that we essentially just have this picture unaffected and pictures don't actually have a first or a last frame. So technically this has an infinite duration. So if we put this right next to this composition, even though this one has a harsh cutoff here, the picture has additional frame handles for a transition like halftone shift, for example, to use. So if we were to right align this next to this clip here, you can see that it's already going to grab some of these frames from the upcoming picture. So that transition works perfectly. And now we can stack our composition right above where this picture starts. So now we have this transition leading into this nice composition without the transition kind of cutting into this animation. And there are five transitions with this pack and they all kind of have this really neat paper kind of flipping or ripping type of effect. So they work perfect for this style of video. Now I did quickly want to show you some of these newspaper presets. There are three of these presets and these work like normal effects. So I'm going to come down here to my timeline and let's just drag number two here right on to this clip here. You can see this one will just kind of put this piece of footage inside of this kind of fake newspaper. 
So of course you can edit this text here. So under header, you've got your main text at the top right there. And then down here you have title controls. And this is gonna be the larger text at the very bottom of the page. And I also wanna show you number three here. Now this one's pretty heavy because it uses the 3D system. There's actually some depth of field going on. So, you know, that's gonna be pretty heavy on pretty much any computer. So if you want, you can come down here to the 3D controls and just disable the accumulation effects as well as the blur controls. If you disable both of these, then the overall effect will run a little bit quicker. And this way you can actually see and you know customize the text as well as the subtitle. And under light controls, you can see there's this subtle little orange glow across the uh, kind of middle of the frame here. You can change that color right here, but you can see this updates a lot quicker in the preview. So once you have everything settled how you like it, you can go ahead and turn back on the accumulation effects as well as the blur. And then you'll probably want this to cache on your timeline. So I'm gonna come up here at playback, render cache and set this to user. And then I'm just gonna right click on my comp here and go to render cache fusion effect filter and just toggle on preset number three. And then once that's cached through, you have something like this. Now I also wanted to show you that uh, each of these effects and presets do actually work just fine in a vertical aspect ratio like this. Sometimes, depending on the title, you might want to switch the aspect mode here to letterbox and envelope. This will squeeze it down into a smaller size here in case you have a longer title. Or you can also use the content controls and simply scale it back like this. Now, the only exception to this would be these newspaper presets. Now, you can see our picture is like way too big and doesn't really fit on the page. But what you can do is go into the video tab here and under the scaling options, you can set this to fit and this will just fit your photo or video into the correct size. Now you can also see that you know this effect was really built for a landscape type of video and there's not really a way to kind of scale everything uh, to fit in this vertical aspect ratio but what you can do is copy and bring this into a horizontal timeline and in this horizontal timeline you can see everything looks correct and so you could either right click and render in place or create a new compound clip and then you can copy and then bring this back into the vertical aspect ratio. And from here, you can see that it's cropped on the top and bottom, but you know that's kind of the only other option you have for a very specific effect like this. So that's M-Style Newspaper. It's available for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro. There's a link in the description where you can check that out. And stay tuned for more. We have a lot more planned for DaVinci Resolve. Our team is working extremely hard to bring you the best and highest quality tools for Resolve. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.